Hi everyone, my name is Scott Cortier and I'm very excited to show you some of the great new features in InTouch HMI 2023 R2. One of the most exciting features that uh, we have coming in 2023 R2 is UDTs or User Defined Data Types or commonly known as structures. And we've done this for a multitude of reasons, but uh, one of the things is we've been asked uh, by many customers to match what the field equipment, PLCs, OPC, UA, things of that nature, what those are doing. So let me show you a little bit about how this works. So now that we're here in the window maker uh, IDE, what I can do here is go to the user defined data types tab. And what I've done is uh, I've created a new data type called tank, several members, in this case, level, pressure, and temperature. And here you can see with pressure, uh, I've gone and changed the data type uh, to a different data type. So instead of being integer like the other ones, you can mix and match the different data types. Then I created a um, new UDT called pump with flow and valve members. And then when I created a new member for tank, uh, that allowed me to create inlet pump, but then make it a uh, pump data type. So instead of integer, real, message, and et cetera, I scrolled down to the bottom and I had my pump data type. So this allows nesting up to six layers deep. You can also, for any of these, you can delete, you can rename, you can duplicate them to make it easier to use, as well as uh, we have included new import and export for the data type so that you can export these to a separate JSON file that is editable outside of the window maker editor. So for example, you could bulk edit these if you wanted to. We do plan on edit, uh, adding a bulk editor to the product um, in the near future, but until then you can use this export and import feature. Now once I've done that, I have um, uh, added new instances of these, so they show up down here as tags. And then what I'm about to show you is the next step in our presentation. And that next step will be uh, user uh, improvements to the graphic editor. This will allow you to drag and drop from the tag hierarchy or from UDTs onto the canvas to now add graphical elements to the application. So this makes it very easy. So let me show you a little bit about that. Okay, before I show you the uh, uh, next enhancement, I wanted to point out that uh, we've added some nice user interface things here. So when you, you're choosing uh, graphics, you can uh, pick your, your folder here and now see thumbnails of the particular graphic and just double click on that and that'll open up. I already have my tanks graphic opened up here, so we're going to slide over here. And now what we have is up here uh, above the properties or along with the properties, we have uh, this tab, for example, and I can expand on my tags uh, or my UDTs. I can do this either with tags or UDTs. For example, I can grab, let's say, level, drag this onto the, the screen here, and then choose my industrial graphic. Now, I can browse through the library of uh, objects, or I can use my uh, last one. So let me delete that one just to show you how easy this is. Uh, in this case, my industrial graphic, the last one that I used uh, was my tank vertical fill. And uh, that has already got the, because I dragged and dropped that onto the screen, that's already got that uh, member of that in there. So making it very easy to create graphics uh, very quickly. All right, so another exciting new feature that we have is the ability to use SVG scalable vector graphics uh, with um, industrial graphics or as image types. So now you can import SVGs to industrial graphic objects uh, or use them as native uh, image types. Now, before we get back to InTouch, what I've done is I've opened up the free and open source uh, product called Inkscape. Now this could be Adobe uh, Illustrator, could be Figma, could be Vectezi, could be a lot of different uh, packages. I'm going to use this to edit, uh, uh, or I've already edited my um, SVG. So what I've done here, I want to show you while I'm in this package, that here uh, I've got the layers and objects uh, tab turned on. So here I've got the objects named, in this case, meter, value bar, scale, uh, and then the overall border. And what I've done is I've saved this as an SVG. Now I'll go back to um, InTouch. And now that I'm in InTouch, I have a few different things that I can do here. I can actually open this up and say, bring in my uh, meter. 
And once I bring this in, uh, it's brought that in, but not only has it um, converted that in this case, so here you can see that it's kept my groupings as well as the individual names that I had. And now this has been converted to industrial graphics objects. So now I can animate this and treat this just like they were native uh, uh, industrial graphic objects. Now another neat little um, thing that I have here that I can do is let me open up my file explorer. Uh, I can take uh, and, and drag and drop from this. Now you do have to turn off user account control, uh, but I can drag and drop right from here and making it very easy to uh, bring objects on the screen. Now if you've got an external company that's designed some layouts or some individual objects, uh, maybe a nice way to do that. Now in addition to bringing in the objects from SVGs and converting them to industrial graphics, you can also uh, open up as an image type. So here I'm, I'm laying down an image type and here you can see all images. We also have SVG files. So now I can bring those in. Let's just grab a red rectangle here. Well, can I drag and drop from that? I can't. <laughs> but uh, there's uh, my red rectangle that I created uh, earlier uh, today. The next thing that I want to show you is a very efficient new feature. It's being able to create in-touch tags from the OPC server, being able to browse to an OPC UA server and just drag and drop those items to create new tags. So in order to show how to create in-touch tags from the OPC UA server, what I've done first is I've gone into the OCMC, or the Operations Control Management Console, and I've configured an OPC UA server here. And um, so now what I'm going to do is just minimize that. And once that is done and, and talking to the OPC UA server, I'm going to go here to the tag name dictionary, but pull this little drop down and change to external providers. And now here we're actually reading directly from uh, the OPC UA uh, server items. And what I can do is just take, for example, this furnace, which may consist of uh, hundreds or thousands of tags. I don't even know how many are in here. In this case, I'm just going to drag this over here, bring it in, and now you can see I've got that furnace and all the associated items and, and members associated with it. So very easy, very efficient way to create a bunch of tags uh, very, very quickly. The next feature that we want to look at is a customer enhancement request for alarm latching and dismissing of those latched alarms. Now to set this up, we'll go into the backstage area and configure alarms and turn on the alarm latch enabled and then save that. So with this new optional alarm uh, latch state, uh, what it does is if, if uh, an alarm has been acknowledged and then returns to a normal state, then it's going to go into this, uh, in this column here, this uh, state column will show up as a uh, latched state. Uh, and then it'll stay on the screen so the user can still see it if, if required. But uh, to get rid of that, they can use some new dismiss features. And I'll show you a bit about that. But before I do, we can go in and um, double click on this in the uh, uh, alarm uh, client control. There's also new color options here. So you can configure what uh, the colors will be when that uh, uh, latch state occurs. Also in... Uh, uh, some of the animations or, or scripting. You can now, for example, configure some of the uh, dismiss features for uh, the scripting functions, whether that's dismiss all, group, priority, selected, etc., etc. You can see you have a whole bunch of things here uh, related to that. And uh, if I get out of that, and if I go back now into um, runtime, Okay, so here you can see I've got uh, uh, an alarm state that's been unacknowledged. Um, in this case, I'm in a low state here. I'm going to slide this up to uh, here into my uh, above my alarm limit. I'm going to right click and acknowledge uh, that. No comment for that. So you can see it's an alarm state. I can also uh, uh, get it out of alarm or normal uh, condition here. And you can see that's now in a latched state. I can right click and dismiss, uh, and I have some options what I want to dismiss. If this was selected, I can dismiss selected, uh, or I can set that up as a function on a button. So uh, nice new feature with, uh, with alarms. 
Next, we've added a new security feature by being able to create a, and manage um, and store users via names. So to set up these names, I'm going to go into the Application Manager up here to Tools, Credential Manager, and here's where I can add in uh, users based on names, uh, their type, and uh, what groups they belong to, and how that uh, all interacts. So. Uh, way to get that into the uh, Orchestra data store as opposed to being stored in the project itself. Uh, the next item is as we've we've added UDTs, uh, we recognize that uh, demo users are going to run out of tags fairly quickly. So what did we do? We doubled the number of tags from 32 to 64 that uh, a user can use in uh, demo mode without requiring a license. And in addition to doubling the tags uh, to 64 for the uh, demo uh, version, uh, we've also updated and improved the introductory demo application for InTouch. So here you can see down in the lower left, uh, we've added some UDTs. Those can be found in the uh, Tank Farm application. So if I go here under Project uh, Process Examples under Tank Farm, this is now using uh, UDTs. In addition to that, uh, we've also added uh, under Images here SVGs and you can turn on and off the animations as those SVGs have been brought in as industrial graphics. Also new is we've updated the what's new so that you can see uh, the features, various features, a lot of which I've just mentioned in this video and uh, uh, covered in here. And the last feature that I would like to show is uh, as a reminder that um, InTouch is part of Aviva Operations Control. So what we've done is we've added the ability to support Aviva Connect sign-on. And that's done here in the configurator. So basically what I do is go to Common Platform, License Mode, and choose Connected Experience. And that again will allow you to authenticate against uh, Aviva Connect when the user has a valid uh, Operations Control subscription. And with that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time and watching this video about what's new in InTouch HMI 2023 R2. Have a great day.